All right, I just, I just, uh, I forgot to hit record. But what I was saying was, if you didn't look at the video before this, you want to go back, look at that first, and then, then go back and try to do this problem or problems like these. The other thing is, I think with the seven and stuff, the more practice, the better. Your book, I don't really like the book, but he does a decent job thevenizing. So he's, he has some nice thevenizing circuits in there. So if, uh, if you need, I'll put some more practice problems with solutions up on Blackboard. I'll work on that over the weekend. And so I want you guys to just eat, sleep, and drink Thevenin over the weekend. Get, get as good at, 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 at using this as you can, and then uh, we'll move on to something else. We'll start something new on Monday. So I'm going to step away so you guys can see this problem. If you didn't get a chance to work it, I'm going to pause a few minutes. Go ahead and get pencil, paper ready. Try to thevenize this problem, and uh, I'll give you just a few minutes, and we're going to walk through it step by step. We'll walk through it slowly. So go ahead and copy it down if you didn't already do so, and start working on it, and we'll see what you come up with. Uh, yeah, I didn't know you had all that stuff in there like that. You got a lot of stuff. Yeah, guys, at the end of the, the – we're, we're setting up a uh, – for a PC lab, he's setting up all his printers and all his stuff for the PC classes that uh, Wayne teaches. So at the end, if it's still here, I'll turn the camera around so you can see what I'm looking at. But I'm afraid to do it now because i got such a nice focus on the board, so we'll see. All right, let me write this out in the circuit on the board. Okay, who can tell me what, what's meant by input resistance? What is the input resistance? Anybody? Input resistance is a resistance from the point of view of the voltage source. That's exactly, I think that was Kevin, and that was exactly right. If you didn't hear him, he said the input resistance is resistance from the point of view of the voltage source. So how do you get that resistance? Well, the very first thing, whether we're looking at input resistance or output resistance, the first thing you got to do is remove the load. So let's do that. You take the load out of the picture. Once I remove the load, I, know I no longer have current flow through R3. If I'm looking from the point of view of the voltage source, here's my eyeball. If the, if the, if the voltage source had an eyeball looking that way, it will see current flow through R1. It will see current flow through R2. It will see absolutely no current flow through R3. And so the battery, the voltage source, can't feel the opposition from R3. It only feels opposition from R1, opposition from R2. And looking from the point of view of the voltage source, R1 and R2, how are they connected? Are they series, parallel, or some other combination? Series. They are series. So my input resistance that's the resistance from the, volume, the point of view of the voltage source, my input resistance is 6 ohms. Now that's not part of the feminine circuit, but the instructions were to find the input resistance. The input resistance is what we in class have been calling the, the total resistance or the equivalent resistance. So we got the input resistance. Now let's proceed to thevenize the circuit. When I thevenize, the first thing I do, I remove the load, and then I mark the terminal. So I'm going to call one terminal A and the other terminal B. The reason for marking the terminals will become clear uh, when we do the next problem, when we do the last problem today. So I've marked the terminals, and then what do I do after I mark the terminals? What's the next step? What do I do next? And is Kevin the only one with a microphone? That's the power. No. What do I do next? We're going to find VTH. So what are the steps to find in VTH? 
the load is removed, and my voltmeter is here. If my voltmeter is here, which resistor am I measuring across? R3 and R2. Okay, so it looks like R3 and R2, right? But that's the thing I want you to understand about this problem. Even though it looks like we're measuring across R3, we're really not measuring across R3. Who can tell me why we're not measuring across R3 when I'm trying to find the voltage? Because... Uh, why does R3... Go ahead. Because since there's no uh, current going through it, R3 is just a basic wire, since there's no current going through it. Thank you. Exactly right. Exactly right. Because I have an open circuit here, there's no current flow through R3. A resistor with no current flowing through it acts like a short. So you can just, if you want to, I'll just erase it. This, when you're trying to find the voltage, is basically a piece of wire. So connecting from A to B is ex exactly like connecting over here across R2. So once you find the voltage across R2, you found VTH. So you want to remember that. That's the takeaway for this problem, is that that resistor just hanging there like that. It's just hanging there with nothing connected to the other end. Therefore, no current can go through it. There can be no voltage drop across that resistor if it doesn't have current going through it. So if I want to find a voltage drop across R, uh, between A and B, it's just a voltage drop across R2. And since these two resistors are in series, I got three in series with three. What would be the voltage across R2? Can everybody see that R2 and R3, they're the same value, so each one's going to get half the voltage? So the voltage across R2 should be what? 50. One and a half. Does everybody see why it should be 50? If, I, if, if this is a wire, this is equivalent to a wire, and if it confuses you, just take, take the leads off like this. All that is is a simple series circuit. Look at that. If I gave you that circuit in any other class, you tell me, well, hey, I got two resistors at the same value. Each one's going to get half the voltage. So I got from this point to this point, I got 50 volts. So over here, VTH is 50. 50 volts. So now I got to find RTH. Put my leads back. And so what's the steps to find an RTH? What do I got to do? Is my mic open? Can we mute our mics, please? Yeah, go ahead and mute your mics. Somebody's doing something in the back. Sounds like they're doing positive okay. things. So everybody got to, can I mute your mics? Yeah, I can't really mute our mics. I wonder if there's a way I can mute everybody's mic. Probably is. There ought to be just one button I can push to do that. But I don't know where it is. But everybody mute your mics, and I had to figure out how to. If I'm the moderator, I sh I should be able to. Re I should be able to do that. Attendee controls. All right, I'm not going to spend time figuring it out. I'll figure it out later. But mute your mics. And the question is, I want to find RTH. What do I do? Well, what I want to do is I'm going to set the, the power source to zero. Since the power source is a battery, i got to replace it with the short. So I'm just going to replace it with this piece of wire. I'm going to come over to this side of the circuit. I'm going to look in there. Here's my thumb and eyeball. I'm looking in there. I'm looking in this way. Looking in that way, what you should see, I'll write this out. You should see R3 plus, looking through here, R3, and then these two, when I connect the wire, it replaces the, the uh, voltage source. What that does is it makes R1 and R2 in parallel. So hopefully you can see that. So RTH is going to be R3 plus the parallel combination of R1 and R2. So 
And that should get you the value of RTH. So go ahead and figure that out for me. It's going to be pretty simple. I got 1.5. I got three, parallel three. Well, if I have the same resistors in parallel, it's just half the value. So I got three, parallel three. That's 1.5. So basically, I end up with 1.5 in series with 1.5. So RTA should be 3 ohms. Let me clean this up so you can see it. So your Thevenin circuit should look like this. TH value 3 ohms, PTH value 50 volts. If you got that, then you can pat yourself on the back. There's one more thing, though. This thing about maximum power. If I put the low resistor back in the circuit, either the original circuit or the Thevenin circuit, I put the low resistor here and put the battery back. Put the low resistor here. If I want maximum power transferred from the voltage source to the low resistor, what do I make? What value do I need to make the low resistor? Well, maximum no. power. Go ahead, someone else got an answer? RTA should equal what? Or RL should equal what? RTH. Exactly. So if this resistor and the ohmic value of this resistor match, then we'll have maximum power transfer from the voltage source to the low. By the way, the Thevenin circuit is called an equivalent circuit. I know I mentioned this in the first video. What exactly do we mean by the Thevenin equipment circuit? What we mean is, is if I take the the battery or the, or the the low resistor and I put it here, it will see a certain voltage or will have a certain voltage across it, and it will receive a certain amount of current in the original circuit. If I remove the low resistor from the original circuit and put it in the Thevenin circuit, it will get exactly the same voltage exactly the same current to it. Now, don't be confused. When this is not connected, the voltage between A and B is the voltage across R2. And the voltage across R2, we calculated that to be 50 volts. So as long as this is not connected, I have 50 volts from A to B. Same thing over here, right? If I disconnect the load, once I disconnect the load, I have this 3 ohm resistor here, but because I have an open circuit, there's no voltage drop across that resistor. A resistor with no current is a piece of wire. can't drop voltage. So that means between, and I really should mark this A and B also, between the output terminals and the Thevenin circuit, if I don't have a load hooked up, I got 50 volts. And I got 50 volts here. That changes once I hook up the load. Once I hook up the load, now I have current flowing. It was 50 volts here, right? Now I have current flowing through R3 down to the low. So now there's going to be a voltage drop across R3. But whatever that new voltage is between A and B, you'll have exactly the same voltage over here when you connect the load in the Thevenin circuit. So we call the Thevenin circuit an equivalent circuit, the Thevenin equivalent circuit. Okay, so if you got that, uh, I, I think I left off on the last video with this problem, and I told you I would start today's lecture with this problem and see if you could get it. So hopefully you get a chance to work on it and uh, to try it out to see if you can get it. If you didn't know, if you have the handout, go ahead and look at the next problem. That's figure three. And again, if you don't have the handout, it is up on Blackboard. You can download it and split the screen or something, and you can go, you can look at it. I'll put the circuit on the board. But what I want you to do is to uh, take a sheet of paper at the top of the paper, draw figure four. I'll put it on the board for you so you can draw it off the board if you don't have the paper. But go ahead and try to thevenize figure, uh, I said figure three. Go ahead and uh, thevenize figure three. Figure three on the, on the handout. And I will go ahead and put it on the board in case you don't have it.
Okay, so there's a circuit. Go ahead and try to thevenize the circuit. Give me VTH, give me RTH, and give me the input resistance of the circuit. See what you can do with it. I'll give you a few minutes to work on it, and then we'll do it together. First thing we're going to do is remove the load. I'll go ahead and do that. So you should at least have done that part. We remove the load. And then we'll mark the terminals. And now I want to find VTH. If I connect up between terminals A and B, which resistor am I across? Or resistors? Which resistor or resistors am I across? R2. Exactly. Can everyone see that we're across R2? R3 and R4 don't have any effect on the circuit because R3 and R4, because of the open circuit, they have no current going through them, so you can replace them with basically a wire, a short. So measuring from A to B is exactly like measuring between this point and this point, which is the voltage across R2. So once you find the voltage across R2, you found the voltage between A and B, you found the thevenin the voltage. And what I've been doing is using the voltage divider rule. So just to remind you, the voltage divider rule says that if I want to know the voltage, we call it Vx across resistor Rx, what I do is I divide the resistor by the total resistance, and that's the input resistance. The input resistance. You uh, multiply that fraction by the total voltage, and that will give you the voltage across the resistor in question. So I tend to, when I'm thevenizing, I tend to use the voltage divider rule. So let's do that. I have uh, the voltage across R2. So I have 9 on the top. What is the resistance looking this way in the circuit? What is that resistance? It's uh, 12, I believe. Well, exactly right. Current will flow through the 3. Current will flow through the 9. And in series, 12 ohms is, is right. I think that was Sam. So I got 12 ohms. So I multiply that fraction by the total voltage, and that will give me the BTH. We get nine volts. So for VTH, I got nine volts. Next step is to find RTH. So go ahead and see if you can find RTH for me. If I look into terminal A, there's my eyeball, I'm looking in there, what do I see? Now remember, I'm not going to draw this as a short now. You should know in your mind's eye, you should be able to replace, mentally replace that with a short. If you mentally replace that with a short, 
what would you see looking in the terminal A? Nobody wants to take a chance. You're gonna see R three. Uh huh. R three in series, and then uh, R one and R two in parallel. Exactly right. Okay, so I see R three in series plus R one and R two in parallel, and then this is what. Is that in that series? That's in series. Exactly right. So hopefully you can see that. I'll go ahead and put this in so you can see that when I remove this, put that wire there, that these two are in parallel now. So you have uh, R3, which is 0 0.5 ohms. You have R1, which is 3 ohms. We have uh, R2, which is 9 ohms, and we have R4, which is 2.25 ohms. So I get 0 0.5. What's 3 parallel 9? Uh, I believe if I did it correctly, it's 2.25. Yeah, that's right. 2 .25. Somebody second that. So if I add all that up. Five. five here and there's my thevenized circuit. I'll remove this. And this was nine. So there's my thevenized circuit. The only thing I can ask for will be the value of RL for maximum power transfer. But, my, but, but by, uh, by now you know that RTH and RAL have to match if I want maximum power transfer to happen. So if you got that problem, you got a uh, problem before this one and, and this one, again, it's designed to, to, to show you, to teach you that when I'm trying to find voltage, I'm trying to find the thevenin voltage, if I have a resistor just hanging there, here I had two of them. I had R3 and R4. Both were just hanging there with no current going through them. That means they're not in the circuit when you're trying to measure voltage. Notice that they are in the circuit when you're looking into the terminal to find RTH, we did, we did include those resistors. But when I'm trying to find voltage, no current, means no voltage drop, means I replace them with a piece of wire so they're not, they're not in the circuit. So good job, guys, for, for doing that. Now, this last problem is interesting. So if you have the paper, I'll put it on the board if you don't have the paper, but look at that last problem. Number one, the voltage source is in the place where you're not used to seeing it. And number two, looks like we got, I don't know if it's a series, it's a series parallel, it's a combination circuit. And they want you to thevenize it. So I'll put it on the board, but go ahead and see if you can thevenize that one. That's a good problem.
It's a lot going on here. So take a few minutes, see what you can do with this. And then I want to go through this one kind of slowly because there's another point here I want you to get. Another takeaway with this problem I want you to understand. What I want is I want Rn I want RTH and I want VTH. Find those values. When you think you got Rn, when you got the value for Rn, I'm just curious what you guys get for that. Go ahead and if you know how to text on this, this program, send that to me through a text. Let's just see what some of the answers are for Rn. And if you don't get it, it's no big deal. We're learning, so I don't care. I just want to know kind of what the values are, what you get. So just text that to me, and I'll write it on the board as I see it. Somebody got four. Got another value, let me know. Three point three. One and a one. Got a one. So two people got one. Point five. Yeah, that can be a little hard to see, so if you didn't get it, it's no big deal. But let's go ahead and figure out how we would find the value of Rn. Another person got one, so we like three or four people. We seem to be favoring that one right there. Somebody else got one. Let's remove the low. Mark the terminals. Now, to find the input resistance, that's the resistance from the point of view of the voltage source. So if I took the voltage source out, and I'm looking up into this circuit right here, Here's my eyeball looking up that way, what would I see? And that's the question. Now, if I, uh, just to make this a little a little more clear, let me, let me take these leads off right there so we're not confusing. So that's the circuit you see. So if you look over this way, then basically you see this. look over this way, basically you see this. So on this side, you see you see four. So you see four looking to the left, you see four looking to the right. So I got four Parallel four, that's gonna give me two ohms. 
Here's something else you can do, though, to make this even easier. Does the order of a parallel circuit matter? Does that affect the, the total resistance? In other words, if I had something like this, if I have uh, two resistors in parallel, or two things in parallel, would I get the same answer if I rolled it this way? If I'm looking in there, I'm looking in there. Clearly the answer is, no, it doesn't matter. If I have a three first and a six or the six, it doesn't matter. In both cases, I'll get a total resistance of two. So the point is the order of things in, in parallel doesn't affect the circuit at all. So if you wanted to, you can think of it like this. That battery, the battery and R1 are in parallel. So you're allowed to switch these around. If you put the battery over here, this will look like circuits that we're used to working on. It'll probably make it a little easier. I'm not going to do that, but you know you could do that if you wanted to. Things in parallel, the order doesn't matter, so I can just move these around if I wanted to. I'm going to leave it like this for a reason, though. So we got the input resistance of two ohms, four parallel with four. Somebody asked about uh, the message went away. But somebody asked about uh, R R1 and R3 are not in parallel. That's uh, it's important that you understand that R1 and R in order for things to be in parallel, the top and the bottom of the devices have to be tied together. Well, clearly R1 and R3 are tied together at the bottom, but they're not tied together at the top because R2 is in the left. So that's why I drew it the other way. If you just take this resistor and you move it over here like that, that's how I had it drawn. What I had was, I had R1, which was a four. We have the battery. And then this resistor and this resistor are in series. So to show you that, I just slid this over here like this. So that's two and that's two. And since they're in a series, you can add those up to get four. So hopefully you can see that these two are in parallel. If you can't, just do what I said. Just switch this around, and then you'll have a circuit that looks like a normal circuit we're used to working with. That's a four, and that's a four. But, yeah, these two are in parallel. Now somebody just sent a message, but it went away, so you can resend it if you have a question. Uh, yeah, we got two ohms for RN. So somebody asked about how we got two ohms from the front. So I'm looking this way. If I take this out, another way to think about it, if you have a pipe and you can only see one way through the pipe, if I have a pipe, I want to use my horn. If I have a pipe, You're looking at that pipe. If there's only one path, then that's series. If I have a pipe, and I'm looking up that way. Now there's a path that way and a path that way, so they're in parallel. So if, I, if I'm looking here, if I look that way, I see four ohms. If I look that way, I see two in series with two. I see another four ohms. And they're in parallel because I can see the two different ways. So there's a lot of ways to wrap your mind around it, but you got to be able to see that uh, that I have two four-ohm branches that are in um, that are in parallel. Somebody just sent me an equation, but I don't know what the equation was. You want to resend that? No, that won't work. 
uh, if I looked at that right. If you have two resistors that are the same value, the best way to get the answer is uh, to use R over N for the total. And this only works if the resistors are the same. I got two values are the same, so I can take one resistor and divide by the number that I have. So I got two of these, so that give me two ohms. If I want to use the product over the sum, it's four times four over four plus four, or I can use the um, one of our rule. But either way, that should be something you guys should practice and know by now. You, you'll get the you'll get the two. Okay. All right, well, let's, let's keep going at this. So we got the input resistance of two. So don't get hung up on input resistance. You should be able to do it. But the point is being able to thevenize. So let's go back to the original circuit. And I want you to find VTH and RTH. Find VTH and RTH. When you get your value for VTH, go ahead and text it to me, or send, or send me, send it to me, and let me see what your values are. 12.5. Somebody got 12.5. 25. If you got something different, then send that to me. If you didn't, you got the same number. You don't have to send it. We got 12.5, we got 25 so far. Now I'm going to redraw this another way so you can really, really, really see this. I'm going to draw it the way I did a second ago. Somebody got 50. All I'm going to do is take this circuit and I'm going to bend it up like this. I'm going to redraw it with this pushed up like that. And then you, you see if you can follow what I'm doing. If I do that, what I have is I got the 4 ohm over here. That's R1. I got the battery. It's 50. And if I bend this up so that this resistor straightens up like that, then what I'll have over here is this. And that's a two. And that's a two. And then these terminals right here, those terminals are right here. That one right there and one right there. So measuring from A to B, you're really, you're really measuring across R3. This is R3. And if you notice, you got basically these two resistors, these, these resistors are in parallel. R1 is in parallel with the series combination of R2 and R3. This is R2. So if I put my voltmeter right here, right across the battery, I got 50 volts. If I walk over here, I still got 50 volts. If I walk over here, I still got 50 volts. So that means there's 50 volts across the series combination of R, R2 and R3. So if I have 50 volts across equal resistances, that means each resistor is going to get half. So I'll have 
25 across here, and I'll have 25 across here. So measuring from A to B, it's like measuring the bolus drop across R3, and that bolus drop is, is 25. So whoever got that, you're right. That's VTH. So sometimes you got to redraw these circuits a little bit to, to think about them the right way. But again, you can't just do one problem like this and think you got it. That's why I want you guys to look at your book and to work on this. But I'm going to make up some practice problems for you with solutions. Uh, probably won't do it today. It'll probably be more on the weekend, to be honest with you. But I'll put it up there. You can practice and look at nothing you got to turn in, but just to see if you're doing it the right way. I'll give you some more stuff like this. So we found VTH, now we gotta find RTH. So I'll leave this on the board for now so you can copy it, but go ahead and find RTH. And then I got one more circuit I wanna show you and then we'll call it a day. See if you can find RTH. I got five. So I got five. Dominic says it's five. So Dominic says it's five. It must be right, right? He says it's five. Everybody, it's five. Anybody else get something different than five? Somebody got one. Give you one more minute, then we're going to go ahead and figure out what the answer is. Now, here's this problem will get you in trouble if you don't understand what I'm about to say. I think in the last video, or no, it was in lab. If you missed the lab session, if you missed the lab session, you want to make sure you go back and look at that video. I sent the link out to you because in the lab session, we talked about two things. We talked about something called an open circuit. We talked about something called a short circuit. Yeah, uh, Jacob asked about something being shorted. Uh, I didn't see what the, the box went away. Was Jacob, was your comment that yes? So Jacob says R1 is shorted. And the flash said R1, I think he said R1 is shorted. That's the point of this problem. That's very, very important. Matter of fact, if you, did, if you missed the lab, I also gave, gave a take home quiz that has short circuits in it. You gotta, I'll put that on Blackboard so you have it. But I wanna talk about what, what, what effect does a short circuit have on the resistor? Well, just think about it. Let's say I have a resistor of 1,000 ohms. I got my ohm meter hooked up to it. There's my ohm meter, and it's hooked up, and it's reading 1,000 ohms. Hooked up, somebody comes along and they put a wire right here. They put a wire right there. Your ohm meter is now going to read what? Zero. Zero. 
Exactly right. Zero. The way an ohm meter works, the ohm meter actually sends out a current through the resistor. That's how it can feel the resistance through the current. If we send current through the resistor, when it gets to this point right here, current takes the path of least resistance. A, a short, a perfect short, has zero resistance. So it's going to go right around the going to go right around the resistor. It's, not, it's going to bypass the resistor. A short circuit is a is an electrical bypass for current. So anything in parallel with a short is not in the circuit anymore. Well, that's exactly what you have when you take out the voltage source and you replace the voltage source with the short circuit. As soon as you do this, R1 is not in the circuit anymore. You shorted it out. You have four ohms in parallel with zero ohms. So basically, everything on this side is not in the circuit anymore. That's basically R4. So if I look in this way, I can see that way, two ohms, that way, two ohms. I got two in parallel with two, which is one ohm. So RTH is one ohm. It's really, really important that you understand that. If If I have any kind of circuit, if I take a piece of wire and connect from here to here, then R1 isn't in the circuit anymore. It's, it's zero. It's just these two. It's, it, this, this equivalent circuit would look like this. That short takes that resistor out of the circuit. If I move the short to here, some of you are going to think, well, R3 is not in the circuit anymore. But actually, R3 and R2 are gone because both of these things, both of these resistors are in parallel with the short. So that short is going to take this one out. But when it takes that one out, it's still in parallel with that one. So it's going to take that one out. And the only resistance in the circuit is R1. If I have the short over here, now what happens? How much resistance is in the circuit? Uh, Sam says zero, and Sam is correct. Remember I said, think about this as a parallel branch right here. This is a parallel branch. Right, so basically all of this, and I hope you can see the, the green, all of this all of that shorted out. If I draw it another way, I'm going to redraw this, our one is like this. The bottom of R1 connects to R2, and that's R3, right? So I got R1, and then this point right here, where they connect to these two is right here, and the bottom is right here. And then basically, I've taken that wire, that orange wire, and I've done this. So that short is in parallel with everything, which means the total resistance is zero. So anytime I have a short in the circuit, whatever it's in parallel with, it's not in the circuit anymore. That's the takeaway from that problem. So it's two points from this sheet that we just went over. We've now done all four problems on this sheet. The one thing that I want you to remember is if I have a resistor, I have a circuit like this, or similar to this. If you're thermonizing a circuit like that, if you remove this, you open that up, 
then measuring from here to here, that resistor right there won't affect my voltage measurement at all. It's like putting the, the voltage meter over here because I don't have current flowing through it. There could be no voltage drop. That's the first thing I want you to take away from that sheet. The second thing we looked at was that when I have a battery, when I feminize and replace it with the short, anything in parallel with the short circuit is out of the circuit. You remove it. It doesn't get any voltage or any current. If you got that, then you're in good shape for the stepanizer stuff. Now, I got one more circuit I want you to thevenize, and this is a very, very special circuit called a Wheatstone Bridge. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time to go into that, but if you take the instrumentation course that Aaron Bloomfield teaches, he'll talk about the Wheatstone Bridge. And I want to show you what the circuit looks like, and then I want you to thevenize it. So usually when you have a Wheatstone Bridge, they draw it like this. All right, there you go. So this is a Wheatstone bridge. And again, this, this circuit is very, 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 very important. It's used uh, in a lot of different places, but mainly in something called instrumentation or um, anytime you want to use something to have what we call a set point. You, you'll use something like this. So uh, let me see how much time I have. Yeah, I was going to try to explain a little bit about it, but maybe we'll do that another time. Go ahead and try to feminize it. I don't want to run out of time. You want to try to feminize it, and the load is in the middle of this diamond-shaped thing. So I want to be quiet for a minute because this one you got to think about. See, we won't worry about the input resistance. It's hard enough to feminize it, so don't worry about the input resistance. Give me the value of VTH and RTH. Um, I'm probably um, going to do RTH first. So let's do RTH first. I'll give you a few minutes to work on it. I'm going to step out of the frame and let you think about it.
Okay, so I got one answer of 4.7 for RTH. If somebody uh, think they got um, 30 for VTH, I got somebody else that got 4.4 for RTH. Now, the good thing about this problem, um, this one of these on exam three, by the way. Exam, well, I guess exam three was your take-home exam, but I guess all the exams are take-home exams now. I don't, I don't know another way to do it. Um, but there is one of these on exam three, and the good thing about it is once you solve it, as long as the load is in the middle, they're all done exactly the same way. So I'm basically giving you an answer to one of the exam problems. Somebody got 1.09 RTH. Wait about two more minutes, and then we'll go ahead and we'll solve this. I think the best way to show how this is solved, because it's confusing. So, uh, I'm going to redraw it in the way that hopefully makes sense. About one more minute, then we'll go ahead and we'll figure it out. All right. Okay, so the best way to do this is to redraw the circuit so you can see clearly what's in parallel with what and what's in series with what, if, if something is in series. When I want to feminize, I remove the load and I mark the terminal, so I did that already. Then what I'm going to do is replace this with the short circuit. I have a voltage source, so I set a voltage source to zero. I replace it with the short circuit. Now, once I do that, once I connect this wire and this wire, this whole thing is one electrical connection, one big node. We use the word node, N-O-D-E. That's one big node, one big connection. I'm gonna, I'm gonna color it in green. This whole thing, once I connect these two points, this whole thing is just like one wire. Think of it as just one big gigantic wire. So what I'm going to do is take that, I made it green on purpose. I think you guys said you can see the green. I'm going to stretch this wire out, this green cable. I'm not going to draw it so fat, but I'm going to stretch it out like this. I got this big old wire, and I want to see what's connected to it. Well, I'll notice on the top here, R1 and R2 are connected. R3 and R4, they're all connected to the green wire. But if you look at it from the point of view of the terminals, because remember, you're really looking in this way. You're looking in that way. I got I got this part right here. I'll make it orange. And I can see that R1 and R4 both connect to the green node of the green wire and to the orange. So what I'm saying is R1 connects to the green. R4 connects to the green. So both R1 and R4 are connected to the green wire, and the top of both R1 and R4 are connected to the orange. So they're connected like this. 
And then at the top of that, I got terminal A. I do the same thing for the other resistors. Terminal B, I'm going to make it orange. I see that both R2 and R3 are both connected to the green wire. So I'm going to put R2 and R3 both connected to the green wire. But the other end of R2 and R3 is connected to the orange node. So I'm going to connect them to the orange node. And then coming out of the orange node, I have terminal B. So that's the circuit I have. And if I bend this out to make it look a little different, what you really have is this. When you look into terminal A, what you're looking into is that circuit right there. You can draw this because, as I said before, as long as the low resistors in the middle, which it usually is, doesn't have to be, but it usually is. If I move it over here, we got a totally different circuit. As long as that low resistor is in the middle, then this is going to be your solution to every, any we stone bridge problem that you that you're given. So we can easily see here that I have R1 and R4 in parallel, and I have R2 and R3 in parallel, and they're joined together, which makes them in series. So this right here will give me RTH. So that's what we got to calculate. So I'm going to erase this. I don't know if you copy that down. Or, but I'll put, the video will be up on, on uh, Blackboard or YouTube. So I'm going to go ahead and erase it. And let's put our numbers in there. We got a 6 in parallel with 3. Plus we got a 4 in parallel with 6. I know this is 2. I don't know what this is. Somebody do that. Oh. Uh, 2.4. 2.4? I think. Yeah, I think you're right. All right, so whoever got that, you're right on the money. Perfect. So, you should understand how I redrew that because. Honestly, that take-home quiz I gave you, if you came to the lab, lab session, I gave you a take-home quiz, you have to do something like this to figure those problems out so you can see what's shorted out or not. That's the, that's the secret. I was going to say trick, but it's not a trick. You, you either understand how short shorts work or not. So, um, yeah, so that that's it for, for RTH. So RTH is 4.4. Now, I got about, well, I got enough time. We need to quickly find BTH. So uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to I'm going to erase this. I'm going to redraw the circuit, but when I redraw it, what I want to do is I'm going to bend the top of the diamond out and the bottom to make it look like an H, the letter H, just so it's easy to see. But you go ahead and try to find BTH while I redraw the circuit. It's going to be the same circuit. I'm just going to make it look a little nicer.
Okay, so what I've done here, this is this is the equivalent circuit. I've just taken the wire here and bent it out on the top, bent it out on the bottom, so it looks like the letter H. Looks more like that. And I think it's a little easier to see because what you have, if you look, when you have a weak stone bridge, these are called the legs. These are the legs of the bridge. Um, and really what you have, if I take the wires off, I take these off so you can see it clearly. You have two series parallel branches. You got R1 and R4, which are in, in series right here, and R2 and R3 are in series, but the two together are in parallel. And then we, we got our wires right here. The terminals A and B. So there's actually a couple steps to this. The way to think about this is like this. Let me move this to the other side. This voltage from, if I think of this bottom part right here, I'm gonna put this symbol down here. I think we gotta talk about what that symbol means. But this voltage right here, We'll call that the voltage at point A. And then over here, across this resistor, that's the voltage at point B. And what you do here is you find each individual voltage. That's the first step. So I'm just going to run out of time. So I'm just going to show you how to solve the problem. And, and you can think about it later. By the way, this is in the book. I'm this, it may be the same exact problem. I don't remember, but it's in the book. Um, but the way you do that is you got to first find VA, and then you find VB. And once you got VA and VB, you can take the difference between the two. We find this voltage. And we find this voltage. But if I want to know this voltage, it's going to be the difference between the two. So I'll show you that in just a second. So if I use the uh, voltage divider rule on this, which I mean you do, you'll notice this was 30 volts. Each branch, each branch has 30 volts across it because they're both in parallel. You treat you, you treat each branch separately. It's like if that was there by itself, you couldn't see that second branch. This would be a series circuit. And the total resistance would be R1 and R4. And you would use a voltage divider rule on that. If the middle leg wasn't there, this would be a series circuit. And the total resistance of that would be R2 and R3. You can use the voltage divider rule on that. And that's essentially what we're going to do. We're going to look at each leg of this or each branch separately. So in this branch, I'm going to use the voltage divider rule. And let me put my values back in there real quick. This was a six. This was a three. This was a four. And this was a six. So I'm going to use the voltage divider rule on the left branch first. And so what I do is I want to know the voltage across the three ohm, so I'm going to put that in the numerator. Now, normally when I use the voltage divider rule, I divide the, that numerator by the total resistance. But it's not the total resistance of the circuit. In this case, it's the total branch resistance. So I just want the, the, the resistance of, if I didn't have that, there would be just this series circuit. You can only use the voltage divider rule in a series circuit. Or a circuit that you can that you can make into a series circuit. I want to be clear on that. So anyway, I want to know the voltage across the three ohm. So I'm going to divide by the 3 ohm by the total branch resistance, which is 9. I'm going to multiply that fraction by the total voltage, which is 30. So 3 over 9 is 1 third, and 1, one third of 30 is 10 volts. So I have 10 volts across that resistor. And now you do the same thing over here. Tell me what V voltage at B is with respect to this point. Use the same equation to give me the voltage at B.
Somebody sent an answer, but I stepped out the room because I had to sneeze so I didn't see it. So I'm going to know the voltage across this resistor. Put that in the numerator. Divide by the total branch resistance, which is 10. Multiply that fraction by my total voltage. I got 30 volts across here. What is that? Uh, 18. 18. All right. So I got 18. So those two steps are actually pretty straightforward. So if you measure here, you measure 10 volts. If you measure here, you measure 18 volts. But knowing that, how would you get the voltage from here to here? Well, the voltage from here to here is called VAB. Let me give you, give you the equation for it. The voltage from A to B is equal to the voltage at A minus the voltage at B. That will get you the solution. Voltage at A minus the voltage at B. So. I got a question. Go ahead. We call that a difference of potential. I ask your question again. Yeah, we call that uh, difference of potential. Exactly. This is this is a difference of potential, right? Now the problem is uh, this VA. We haven't. There's a lab that we got to do uh, the voltage divider lab. And we haven't done that yet, so this doesn't make a lot of sense to you right now. But trust me, experience. Well, I don't know if we're doing that one because that's the one I said it's kind of hard to do on um, on your simulation software. But I gotta explain this 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 notation. But that is this V at A minus V at B. That is a difference of potential. And what I'll do is I'll since we're not gonna do that lab, I'll take time to explain this because this actually turns out to be important if you're gonna take AC, this this notation here. But yes, I think that was Roderick, I can't roll my tongue. Uh, yeah, but that's right. It's a difference of potential. So let's let's get the answer because we run out of time. Actually, I'm out of time already, but give me just a minute. So I got, I got 10, what was it, 10 and 18? So if I put my numbers in, look what happens. I got 10 volts minus 18 volts. That gives me a negative 8 volts. Negative 8 volts. Negative 8 volts. So when I draw my circuit, here's what you do. This was 4.4. Um, if if I want this to, to here, here's the way to let me let me show you both ways. Let me, so what, really, what you're doing is this. I don't want to confuse you. So that's eight volts. If that's A and that's B. Your positive is there, then your negative there. If you don't get that right, I don't care. But but if you have your red lead of your, I don't know if you can see this red. If you have your red lead, I'm trying to shade that in, that's red. If you have your red lead of your voltmeter there and your black lead here, that red lead is hooked here, then you're going to read the negative A. I don't really care how you show it. But if you want to, if you want to show it as a positive answer, what you can do is just draw the circuit like this. And what you do is you you call this one right here terminal B and that one terminal A. That's not a big deal. So if you get that backwards, it doesn't matter. If you if you got the A and the 4.4, I would be completely happy. So I ran a little over today, so that really uh, is it. Um, I'm going to end it here. Uh, we need to get an exam, though. I need to get exam two together. Uh, it's going to be a, it's going to have to be a take home. I don't know how to do the blackboard thing. I'll tell you more about it on Monday, but plan on having it next week sometime. I'll put it together, and probably next Friday might be a good time to try to try to get that out the way. So uh, on that exam. Uh, we talked about series, we talked about parallel, we talked about series parallel. So it'll be some of that. 
We also talked about, uh, if you remember, the Empire rating, the, the graphs. There was some graphs I gave you when we talked about battery amp hours. There'll be some of that on there. There'll be a, a little bit of this on there, Thevenus Theorem and Maximum Power Transfer. So I'll give you something like that. I'll put something together and give you something like that. So I have more to say about it on Monday, but expect that probably probably Friday. And then by uh, make sure you download that uh, lab software, MultiSim, and try to uh, go through that tutorial and do that first lab for me, and um, I'll figure out how you're going to submit it. Jacob, there's some kind of way you guys can take a picture with your phone, and he says it'll turn it into a PDF. I may consider that for that first lab, but we'll, we'll see. We'll work it out. I'll let you know more about it on Monday. Um, you guys have a great Genius Scan app, Jacob says. It's called the Genius, Genius, like Einstein is a genius, Genius Scan app. If you want to put that on your phone and play around with it, he said you can lay a piece of paper down and it'll take out the background and only capture that paper uh, and turns it into a PDF or email. So try that out if you want to. And that may be a good way to do it. We'll see. Now, I'm going to end it. Before I end it, I promise you I was going to turn the camera around so you guys can see uh, what I'm looking at in here. For the PC class, this is your classroom now. It's full of, uh, it's full of P PCs. It's full of printers for the PC class. So he's going to do an online lab talk about printers today. So here's here's what I'm looking at. My students are all printers now, if you guys can see that. Anyway, you guys have a great rest of the day, and I will talk to you on Monday. Need anything, just send me a text or, or email.